back with Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought's 1940 Britain campaign. Last episode, we had a couple of battles. We had a, a destroyer ambush, uh, a German destroyer uh, ambush on a couple of our light cruisers right here off the Dutch coast. And we had a light cruiser duel way out here in the Atlantic. Uh, both of those battles went pretty well for us. And that was uh, earlier in this month, March. And now we've got a convoy battle uh, just right here off of the uh, port of Wilhelmshaven. And uh, we've got two heavies and a light versus two lights and a heavy. So fairly evenly matched with a bunch of transports in the way. And we'll see what happens. I don't want the heavy cruisers burning 9-inch uh, ammo on transports. Kind of okay if the light cruiser does. Her, uh, which light cruiser? 7-inch. 1,800 rounds. Yeah, you can, you can shoot transports. I don't care. Don't want them burning torpedoes yet. I think I prefer to keep those for the uh, cruisers, which look like uh, from radar pings are right back over in this direction. They've got about a 14 kilometer range on their torpedoes. Their light cruisers at least have standard propulsion. I'm not sure I've ever confirmed precisely what the heavy cruisers have for their torpedoes. They're already at 12 miles. I'm going to go ahead and uh, slow down to two. <laughs> Kind of like I've done in other convoy battles. I'm going to kind of move over here and keep uh, the transports between us and the German cruisers so that if and when they do fire torps at us, they may hit some of their own transports. Okay. The heavy cruisers, let's have them, they can let's target that. Don't quite know what it is yet, but it's a warship. Or should be, because the, tr the transports have already been spotted. They can continue fi firing secondaries on transports for now. I guess I should turn their 9 inches on. Batteries released! I think HE is fine. I'm thinking that's probably these these are probably the two light cruisers with the heavy further back. Just because their light cruisers are significantly faster than their heavies are. Those are definitely the light cruisers. They've both uh, <clears throat> activated smoke screens. I think everybody knows that the heavies can't do that. Okay, there's our first spotted torpedoes. town can get turned around. <laughs> I 
Uh, I'm gonna break and trim. No, no, no. Let's do this. Let's, let's use this new uh, with the patch. Avoid torpedoes. Let's see how Antrim handles it. I think Drake's probably going to get back out of the way before this to yeah it's going to clear her stern pretty nicely i think there's another spread coming over here but i don't believe either their lights or their and i don't believe their lights have uh oop, antrim's turning into drake hope that doesn't turn into a mess they don't have fast propulsion torpedoes. I'm not intervening. I want to see the behavior here. Is the anti-collision nonsense going to overtake the torpedo avoidance? And... Well, it didn't have to be that close, but I don't believe they touched. Do we have more torpedoes over here? No. I, th I think they're clear. I'm going to turn avoidance off. And I'm just going to kick AI on and off. Just to make sure that Antrim isn't confused on what to do now. Oh, Emden. Almost done. We've got Emden, Berlin. I've seen Berlin several times. Still haven't identified the heavy cruiser yet. Let's take care of these heavy cruisers, or these. Uh, who is that fired at? Well, it's kind of dangerous for both of them. Um, town. I think town's going to cross ahead of those. Okay, that looks all right. Emden is going down. Nope, don't fire at the. Let's let's take out this other. There you go. Oh, the heavy and the Berlin are actually in the same same division. Forgot about those torpedoes. Let's clear those first before we turn back. Cormoran. <clears throat> like I've mentioned several times, you kind of get the same ships showing up over and over in battles. Meanwhile, the Germans 
may have a couple of ships that we've never seen in battle. And we've got some that I don't think have ever been in battle, as we've talked about before. Sappho, for one. Okay. Town has cleared the pear fish. Head back over this way. Yeah. What are you shooting at, anyway? Oh, you're shooting at the heavy cruiser. No. Let's just have town uh, clean up these transports. Not what I intended. I had the wrong division selected. Town doesn't need much of a course change to avoid that spread of torpedoes over here. Berlin is almost done. Yeah, we'll keep it on HE, I think. Cormoran has fired somewhat recently with one launcher, but I think that was probably the spread over here. That was targeted on, well, it was coming this way. It could have been either one of our two divisions. Okay, they just fired again, no doubt on the Drake. So we'll just turn. Turn town too, just so they don't get cross-threaded over here and get in each other's way. Corman just fired some more. But our cruisers are already in a turn. So, however he aimed them is going to be off. He just fired again. Those torpedoes might be coming this way.
Yeah, those are no threat here. But I think that was that may have been a spread fired here. No. That was the earlier spread fired from the uh, quintuples. And then he uh, unmasked another quintuple launcher and fired a second time. I think is yeah, I think is what I saw from looking at uh, this indicator. Town, you done with the transports? Not quite. Okay, transport's done. Keep them on HE. Okay, Cormoran has fired from her underwater tubes again, looks like, or fired from a different one. Those would be aimed this way. I believe they almost certainly would have been aimed at Drake rather than Town. Okay, I don't think that pair of torpedoes is much of a threat to any of our cruisers. It's going to come right down through here. I think there may be still some over here, but I don't believe there's any way that Drake and Antrim could get a foul of them. Town has launched a spread. I don't think Town needs to really get any closer to him. <laughs> and come on back, come on back over this way.
I can speed up time just a little bit. Not sure why a town isn't firing. Oh, uh, she's just rotating her turrets. <clears throat> Coming out of the turn. There we go. Cormoran has lost a turret, Ford one, one of the Ford ones. Town's been firing uh, AP this whole time. Cormoran has taken enough crew losses that she's at 0%. Uh, if, whoops. One torpedo spotted. There may be more in there, though. You don't necessarily pick them all up. Okay. Turn on torpedo avoid just to make sure. And no, oh, I'm not sure that was the right thing for you to do. <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Okay.
Okay, looks like Antrim has got herself sorted there. Well, despite 0% uh, efficiency on torpedoes, they are slowly reloading. And it doesn't prevent them from firing, obviously. So I'm not 100% sure what the difference between you know, what exactly does zero percent mean? There's obviously at zero percent on the range of best and worst crew performance. There's still some minimum, you know, slow reload, maybe crappy accuracy. It apparently doesn't mean that the torpedoes are completely out of commission. I believe she's just trying to disengage now. Still doing 23 knots. I'm going to slow down a little bit with Drake just to let Antrim catch up and of course it helps accuracy a little bit. I think we can speed up a little bit. Cormoran's losing some propulsion. Quite a few fires going. The hit differential is enormous, but of course a lot of that was uh, on transports too, so it's not exactly a even comparison. Yep. She's just fired a quintuple launcher. And that's not quite the trajectory that I expected. Unless she fired him back. Uh. Okay. 
Drake, keep going that way. You're fine. I think they were fired at Antrim. Let's have uh, Town just go steady and break off this way. That should be fine for her. And I could make the same sort of turn. I could detach and make the same sort of turn for Antrim, and I think she would be fine. Let's just let... Okay, this kind of confirms something that I s suspected earlier. Um, Town is in a division by herself. This torpedo avoidance is grayed out. So it only appears for a multi-ship division, which pretty much confirms that the lead ship does not do, you know, torpedo avoidance AI behavior. You got to control the lead ships. A good question might be, if I had left town and follow... and then done torpedo avoidance on division one Antrim would do AI torpedo avoidance behavior as we've seen her do what would town do would she also avoid torpedoes because she's been told to follow and therefore is kind of obeying orders in division one to some extent or would she just continue to blindly follow Antrim while it's maneuvering to avoid. I may check that out sometime later. For now, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. And I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let this mechanic play out again. It seems to work pretty well, but it, it also seems like uh, you know the AI's action maybe trends a little bit too much toward turning away. Where sometimes the right move is to turn toward the torpedoes, depending on the, the angle from your heading to their course. I suspect Corman will probably sink before she fires uh, that quintuple launcher again. Although she has one on the other side. She has another one on the same side, for that matter. She's also got loaded underwater tubes. Drake's plenty close enough. Doesn't need to go any closer than that. I've just been kind of trusting things are working out okay back here. Yeah, I mean, she effectively avoided, but look how separated she let herself get from, uh, from Drake. I'll let town fire off some torpedoes again if she feels like it. <laughs> Corman's propulsion is pretty much gone. 
coasting to a stop, most likely. DIW. That's dead in the water. DIW is the shorthand acronym. She just fired again. Probably at Drake this time because that's who she's shooting guns at. Or, wait, it. I don't think she fired at town, but uh, just in case. <laughs> she might have had a loaded uh, launcher on this side and decided to shoot on the starboard. No fish spotted yet. I know she launched. There's five in the water somewhere. Oh, I, I've still I still have this on. Oh! <laughs> Town popped her with a torp. Alrighty. Well, that went pretty well, I think. Nine transports down. Three more cruisers removed from the German order of battle. 3,400 victory points versus five. Just 81 VP for the transports. So what is that? Nine of them. So we got nine VP apiece for them. Well, it's more than we were getting before the patch. Okay, um, before ending this episode, I want to do kind of a little experiment. Now that a blockade is in place and we can actually see the power projection numbers. I think, not no, I think that in being versus C control mode means little or perhaps nothing for purposes of the power projection calculation. Let's see if maybe we can get some insight into that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off C control for everybody. Uh, most of them are out already, but 
turn off sea control on everybody that was, which was mostly our battleships at the time. And I, I don't want new ships entering service while I'm doing this. Because I'm, I'm going to do this for a, a few turns. So for the moment, I am going to suspend. Well, you can only suspend one at a time. I'm going to suspend uh, Collingwood and Royal Sovereign's building. Just so uh, when they enter the fleet, they don't throw the number off. And I so I don't want to add any ships. I don't want to lose any ships. I don't particularly want uh, Germany, for that matter, to uh, lose any ships either. And I'm just going to click through a couple turns just to make sure that it registers and it, and it calculates and see if this number changes. We only had a couple ships on sea control. And then I will turn on sea control on everybody and see if there's a big difference in the power projection number. I don't think there will be, but I don't know. So let's, let's just see what happens. And I'm just going to click through the turns. If there's any battles, I'll just click past them. Okay, you, You're not forced to fight the battles that show up. So a few of them you are, like when it pops up with the window and you have the delay withdrawal, you know, you've got to deal with that. But um, like the convoy battles and stuff, you don't have to fight those. You can just go on to the next turn. What happens though is you, is, uh, you do, you know, if you skip a battle, you lose some VP. But I mean, come on. <laughs> okay, I'll give Germany a little bit of VP here. Well, Darinitz just got fired. His naval prestige got low enough, so now Caprivi is in charge of the German Navy. Okay, so we did drop a few battleships from sea control into in being. Our power projection did not change. Just a second, I'm actually going to write that number down. Okay, I'm just going to ignore this convoy battle, probably give up a couple VP. Okay, did not change. So this seems pretty clear that this is the, the number with everybody in being. We, have, we had some repairs. Oh, the Germans are building some new ships. Yeah, I guess I would if I were them. But can they afford to actually build them? Are they having to suspend them? Who knows? Does the AI even suspend ship builds? No idea. Okay. Also notice, we had several ships, five or six, I should have counted them up really, uh, mostly cruisers that were repairing they have now been repaired so it and this number has stayed the same so it would appear maybe this number counts ships under repair not just active ones so now let's go through and put all these ships in sea control Oh, let me let me suspend Oscar here so he doesn't uh, complete while I'm doing this. All right, I'm not going to do this for nine months. Those those guys are fine. Let's make sure we get these few on C control. Okay, 
So now every operational ship in the Royal Navy is on sea control instead of in being. Let's see if this power projection changes. No. Skip past this convoy. I'm pausing for a second because I just noticed uh, it may have been in that earlier term, but I just now registered that Germany has laid down a new battleship of a different class. These battleships that they started with, those are the Siegfrieds. This is the Schlesiens class, which I think we did see that they had created a design for that. Huh. What are the chances? I mean, it's going to take them almost two years to build that. I think it's extremely unlikely uh, that we will ever see it. But it would be kind of cool to see what they did. Uh, and also, uh, armored cruiser, or uh, excuse me, heavy cruiser. Saxon of the Saxon class. So that's a lead ship too. Undine of the Undine class. That's a lead ship. So they've started laying down the uh, first ships of uh, their new designs. It's interesting. Just to make sure, I'm going to advance another turn. Back to the end. Yeah. That, this is what I thought we would see, but I wasn't 100% sure. Uh, repair versus operational, in being versus sea control, that apparently does not affect power projection. Meanwhile, during those few months since the blockade started and we came out of that battle, I think Germany was down at... Uh, 47,000 now they're up to 72 their operational ship count has not gone up what they have done is laid down a bunch of ships I can't imagine that ships in construction count toward power projection that would be kind of weird. That, that can't be right. Yet, I don't know how else to explain how their power projection jumped up. Because they didn't complete construction on any of these. Anyway, well, you know, did that little thing, paid attention to the numbers, see what would happen. Some questions appear to be answered, maybe others raised. Your guess is as good as mine. And there's another battle out here in the north. Looks like a pretty big one. Not quite as big as that earlier battle in the middle of the North Sea, but we've got uh, Albemarle and three cruisers against Nisenau, one cruiser, and a destroyer. Uh, Albemarle is one of the smaller ones. This is one of the Canada's. Um, so she's got 15 inch guns versus Nisenau's 16 inch guns. But this battle will wait until the next episode. Thank you for watching.